Welcome back to WeBookProfessional.com. Today we're going to do a single apparatus mobility routine utilizing a Voodoo Floss Band. Alright, so uh, the original Voodoo Floss Band, or as far as I know, the original Voodoo Floss Band um, was created by Kelly Starrett uh, from Mobility Wad in San Francisco CrossFit, uh, but you can also get them in cheaper versions on Amazon. And basically you're just looking at it like a, it looks like a roll of athletic tape, but it's an elastic band. All right, and the benefit of it is that it creates both a compression of the joint as well as a distraction. Um, it, the intermittent compression allows for almost a, uh, a stability or protection of the joint while you can get into positions that you might otherwise be limited in. And then the, um, the tightness of the band will actually feel like the, the joint is a bit distracted, so you get some gapping of the joint as you move into different positions. Uh, so I find it very helpful um, to you know, work specifically on different areas of the joint. Uh, there's also, if you put it right on the skin, a benefit to creating a little bit of a fascial release where it actually allows for some of the sliding surfaces and superficial fascia to move better. Um, and you know, the, the proof is in the pudding sort of this thing that it, you know, as soon as you take it off, you tend to feel substantially more mobile. So we're going to start with the ankle, we'll work from the bottom up, all right, and I find uh, this to be very beneficial. The other great thing about this band is that it's very mobile and portable, but you can be doing basically any movement that you're limited with, with it on, and it just enhances the mobility of that movement. So I'm just really getting tight around the, the joint specifically, so that would be right run under the bit up from there, but most of the, the wrapping should take place right around the joint line, so you get that compression, all right, which is really shunting the blood flow initially to the area, um, and then we move around it to, to create a little bit of blood flow, and then when we take it off, all the blood flow rushes back in, so you're going to get this perfusion to the joint, uh, but also I'm really supporting the joint, so it feels like if there is an injury there, I feel more comfortable moving in that area because I'm it with the band and then right on the joint I actually feel like there's a bit of a gapping so if you know a lot of times with the ankle the bones are kind of blocking into each other the talus and the mortise and the tibia and the fibula coming together there's blocking each other so you need to give it a little bit of space and that's what the band allows for all right so any motion that really puts you into dorsiflexion is fair game with this on so I like to kind of do all the same motions for whether we're working the ankle, knee, or hip. So I'm going to start in this half kneeling position. Just allow myself to lean over the ankle. It's okay if the heel comes up, but the goal is to try to force it down. So it'll be moving the, the heel in the direction of down on the mat. So we can start with just a lunge forward, an exaggerated lunge forward from this half kneeling position. I'm really just working into the ankle come up from there and then I'm going to go into an open half kneeling position, same idea, and just allow myself to get into that ankle. So if I go into the open half kneeling position, I find that I can get a little bit more range of motion without feeling like I'm jamming the knee up. All right? And again, if I bring the heel a little closer to my butt, I'm going to get a little bit more stretch in the ankle. All right, so that's going to be promoting dorsiflexion. Then I can also look at promoting plantar flexion by just having Toes tucked under, sit on my feet, get a little jiggy with it on the feet, just sliding side to side. All right, and then come back up and go into dorsiflexion again, whether I'm in the open half kneeling or just the full half kneeling position, and then drop back down into plantar flexion in this hero's pose type of position. All right, and then I can also kind of curl the toes under and get a little bit of dorsiflexion with of the ankle and dorsiflexion of the toes. All right, so you want to be sort of uh, freestyling with these movements so you can get a flow. All right, so dorsiflexion forward, dorsiflexion open half kneel, and then going into this plantar flexion. All right, so about two minutes exploring all those corners there, and then you take the band off. One, you can see around the area, sometimes if you have a little bit of fluid down there, once the band comes off, usually that's not there anymore. All right, and then you want to retest you know, how 
well, how far can I go forward without the heel wanting to come up? And you just get a general sense that things are a little bit freer. All right, so the reason I like to do this position is you can see that the knee and the hip are all involved together with this motion. All right, so when I move the band up into the knee, I can really stay with the same type of motion. I can still continue to work on my ankle mobility, but with the band moving to the knee, my focus will be a little bit more up higher. And I'll show you how that's done. So I'm going to wrap right around this bone that sticks out of the tibial tuberosity. Mine's pretty prominent from a childhood Auschwitz slaughter. All right. I don't like to wrap the kneecap. It's not the worst thing in the world that you do, but I'm going to go on top of it and just make sure that I'm overlapping the back part of the knee and then coming off onto the side. And then always leave a little bit of a corner that you can tuck in. All right, and now things are pretty stable through there. So again, I can do similar movements. I can lunge forward, I'm working into the ankle, but now my knee really gets a lot of support. I can really work into the corners of the knee. So I can work hip out, hip in a little bit, and my knee just feels really supportive. If I didn't have this band on, I might feel some pinching around like where the, what I would think of as like the meniscus getting pinched or just whatever, you would feel you know, sensation of pinching. With the band on, you just don't get that at all. It just feels very, very supported. So it actually allows me to move further into the ankle as well. Okay, and then I can go into this hero's pose. Again, I'm sitting on feet. And there's pressure from the band, but I don't feel at all any pinching. I feel a, basically a distraction at the joint. All right, so about two minutes going through all those positions. I can also step up and get into more of a higher lunge with the back leg coming up, and then work on rolling into this full flexion calf to thigh. All right, take that off. Two minutes, both sides, always comparing before and afterwards. So easiest thing to do is just compare the movement you were just doing before and afterwards, just to see if there's any restriction. I mean, this feels so free. The, the ease of my calf touching my hamstring is so much different now than it was. And then when I sit here, because I only did the left leg, I feel like I'm falling towards the left. So like I was saying, it's, it's pretty obvious when you're done using this tool how effective it is. All right, now we're going to move up into the hip. All right, so I'm going to go right around the groin, and then you got your sit bone in the back. That's basically where you want this to be hanging out. All right, so make sure that it does go over that sit bone. Move your privates to the side, gentlemen. All right, and really get up in there. So if you're at the, in the comfort of your own home, you can be you know, as close to naked as possible because you do want this to be on your skin if possible. But for the sake of the video and for everyone watching, I will keep my pants on. All right, and then we're going to just make sure that this feels really tight around the hip, which is really the groin, okay? So I'm gonna get into same positions. When I go forward, I'm gonna really kind of lean in here. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not getting any pinching in this hip. All right, and then I can actually lift the back leg up. I can open this knee out a little bit. All right, and just really work on opening up into abduction external rotation. I can create a little bit of torsion there. And then I can switch and have this be the back leg. So I'm working on that hip extension. All right, if I do the open half kneeling position, first I can make it be the flex leg. And then I can have it be more of the leg that's getting a stretch into abduction here in the inner thigh. All right, and then I can really take this one from here and drop down into this pigeon type of pose or a Z sit to pigeon. Just really want to freestyle with it and trying to take advantage of the band. You want to think about putting your belly on your thigh and get this sort of tissue approximation or body contact because the band should give you a little bit more opportunity to do that because it's gapping the area. All right, so two minutes each side there, and then again, you're going to retest the same movements. So let's get this up. All right, and then you retest, coming forward, getting into this pigeon pose. And yep, and I can now put my belly on the thigh, really opens things up. All right, so obviously you want to do that on both sides, and you can expect some asymmetries side to side. All right, but that's the use of the Buddha floss band 
there's other stuff you can do with it up in the upper body. Uh, it's a little e easier to do it on the lower body when you're by yourself. Um, I'll do another video for the upper body, likely with a partner. See you next time.